with the increase of electric cars, laptops, smartphones, and other rechargeable batteries, the mineral cobalt has taken center stage in the last few decades as a commodity critical to the global energy transition. Like other minerals that are used in everything from computers and mobile phones to airplanes and medical devices, the production of cobalt is not easy. Usually cobalt mining requires people that are known as artisanal miners to dig deep tunnels by hand or small tools. However, this kind of mining is very dangerous and it is described as the blood diamond of batteries due to the devastating impact that cobalt mining has on environment and human rights, especially the kids and pregnant women. The need for cobalt is rising due to the growing sales of electric cars especially in Europe. Governments that are promoting these sales by offering substantial environmental incentives. According to the World Economic Forum's Global Battery Alliance, the demand for cobalt in batteries is expected to increase four times by 2030 because of this surge in electric vehicles. But how do cobalt produce? Cobalt is a rare metal that makes up batteries. It is found in the Earth's crust or what we call crustal rocks. Cobalt serves various purposes, including its application in jet turbine generators, tool materials, pigments, and smartphone batteries. It plays a crucial role in lithium-ion batteries, constituting approximately 4 to 30 kilograms per battery, and is a key component in about half of all electric cars. The Democratic Republic of the Congo, the second largest country in Africa, and the sole producer of cobalt. But despite DRC being the largest cobalt producer, it is associated with conflict, poverty, and corruption. It is home to a population of 92 million people, and 2 million of them depend on cobalt for their livelihoods, and these people are often called as negotiates. It produces over 70% of the world's cobalt, with 15 to 30% coming from artisanal and small-scale mining. In 2020, about 70% of the world's cobalt came from there which is used by some powerful companies including Apple, Microsoft and Tesla. But from the last few years, human rights organizations have consistently reported some serious issues in these mining operations. The risks are especially elevated in artisanal mines in the DRC. It is being continuously accused of child labor deadly accidents and violent confrontations between artisanal miners and security personnel from large mining companies. Cobalt is mined in two ways in the DRC. One is industrial, which is large-scale mining, and the second is artisanal, which is small-scale mining. Artisanal mines in the DRC, responsible for mining 20 to 30 percent of the country's cobalt, operate without labor laws or safety protocols. According to Transport and Environment, a European Clean Transport Campaign Group, approximately 200,000 miners are employed in these mines illegally in which at least 40,000 of them are children who are only six years old. These small kids meet their death daily as they enter vertical tunnels without any safety and dig for cobalt under inhumane conditions. Working in these is very dangerous as there is no proper equipment and they dig with their bare hands. They only get 20 minutes of oxygen at a time while digging. As reported by Statista, a German company, the cobalt industry will reach its substantial value of $17.39 billion by 2027. Unfortunately, this money never reaches out to those miners who are risking their life to earn some money. According to the Union run radio station Radio Copy, between 2014 and 2015, no less than 80 artisanal miners lost their lives. In 2019, an accident claimed the lives of 43 miners. Siddharth Kera, a global professor at the British Academy, approximates that around 2,000 illegal miners meet their demise annually in the DRC. Additionally, many endure lasting lung damage, skin infections, and other injuries that profoundly alter their lives. He has also mentioned in his book, Cobalt Tread, that how big tech companies are connected to the mistreatment of miners in Congo. He also described the culture of violence within the mines that left no choice to pregnant women but to continue mining 
and exposing themselves to toxic chemicals. Not only this, these women who are living across the mining region of the DRC are at high risk to give birth in this dangerous environment. Working in cobalt mines is deadly as sometimes tunnels often collapse which causes life-changing injuries and deaths that go largely unreported. In 2019, ABC News also highlighted some stories about a mother who tragically lost her 13-year-old son in a mining accident. She told the reporters that her only son informed her that he was going to the market to purchase coal for cooking but instead he went to a cobalt mine to earn additional income. After that he never returned home. But the issue came into light when certain Congolese families filed a lawsuit against Tesla, Apple, and Microsoft accusing them of complicity in the deaths and injuries of children. The legal action specifically centered around a child named John Doe 1 who was just 9 years old and worked as a human mule which carried bags after bags of cobalt for just 75 cents a day. During a workday, he fell into a tunnel. Although he was dragged out by fellow workers, but nothing helped as he was paralyzed and will never be able to walk again. You cannot even imagine the pain and suffering of these families. They are still waiting for justice. The vast majority of companies dealing with these blood batteries are in China. China dominates the primary producer of refined cobalt, accounting for 66%, followed by Finland at 10%, as reported by Mining. Calm. According to the New York Times, over the past 15 years, Chinese companies have acquired North American and European mining firms operating in the DRC. As of the previous year, Chinese companies held ownership of 15 out of the 19 industrial mines in the DRC. China has promised the DRC billions of dollars in investment in the form of infrastructure, schools, and roads in exchange for Congolese cobalt. This is yet another example of how stories involving around China never end well. In today's world, China is leaking blood cobalt into the supply chain for electric vehicles, as Congo Dongpang International Mining SPRL stands one of the most significant cobalt processors in the nation. It operates as a subsidiary of Jiajiang Hyo Cobalt Co. Ltd., a Chinese company. Huyo supplies cobalt to electric car manufacturers, including Volkswagen. Approximately 40% of Huyo's cobalt is sourced from the DRC. In 2016, according to the non-governmental organization, Huyo is abusing workers physically and supporting child labor and forced workers in DRC. However, the company has denied the accusations. But the most horrifying is when a worker dies during mining, they keep their dead bodies hidden and bribe their families to keep quiet. Not only Huyo, major automakers, including Tesla, Volvo, Renault, Mercedes-Benz, and Volkswagen are also accused of forced workers and child labor. They claim to have a zero-tolerance policy, but the truth is nowhere to hidden. However, in 2020, Tesla declared its intention to adopt cobalt-free lithium-ion batteries for its electric vehicles. Nevertheless, shortly thereafter, the company entered into a deal with Glencore, a cobalt mining company, for an annual supply of 6,000 tons of cobalt, as reported by Bloomberg Quint. Isn't it hypocrisy? Because even Tesla knows that without cobalt, electric vehicles cannot run. Demand for metals has tripled in the last decade and is projected to double once more by 2035 with electric vehicles being a major driver of this demands. Reports from the International Energy Agency indicate that over 6.5 million EVs were sold globally in 2021, and this figure is anticipated to surge to 66 million units by 2040. Consequently, the need for cobalt will increase significantly, with the potential requirement being 66 million units multiplied by 30 kilograms of cobalt. As per the World Bank, there is a projected 585% increase in the demand for cobalt by 2050. The people of the Congo aspire to ride this surge, viewing it as an opportunity to break free from poverty. At last, shutting down these companies is not a solution, 
as practically it is a lifeline for millions of Congolese who live in extreme poverty. Instead of this, the companies should team up with groups to create a shared standard for safety and stop child labor in DRC. They should come up with solutions like setting up some rules and providing proper equipment to miners before the electric vehicle kills more people even before it reaches the road because nobody signed up for this so that when workers come to work they don't have the fear of whether they will go back home or not life is precious that we should not play with that's all for today but before that what are your views on it do let us know in the comment box for more videos like this do not forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification to stay updated.